everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Choir Boys. The Choir Boys are an Australian rock band from Sydney, formed in about 1979 with Mark Gable, Ian Hume, Brad Carr and Lindsay Tebbett. The lineup has changed over the years and their music can be described as energetic, catchy, uh, rock and roll. They do uh, continue to perform and release music to this day, which is, you know, fabulous to hear. And, you know, the Choir Boys do have a, a dedicated following in Australia and I, I think they've got a, a significant influence on the music scene. So, yeah, I thought it was important to start with them. Who are the Choir Boys? Well, they were formed in the Northern Beaches. Uh, one of their demos was uh, sent to Albert Productions producer George Young, George of the Easy Beats and older brother of Angus and Malcolm of ACDC. And they were signed to Albert Records. Now, Jim Manzi produced their self-titled debut album, Choir Boys. Well, yes, because, you know, the, the band actually started, you know, I think it's um, on Wikipedia somewhere it says 78, but we really um, started in uh, fooling around with the idea probably a couple of years before that. So, I mean... The impression you have is the early 80s because we released our first album in 1983. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was um, uh, produced by Jim Manzi. Choir Boys uh, did sign with Mushroom Records uh, and they did release the album Fireworks and that was in uh, May 1986. Uh, they also opened um, for the, the leg of the Australian tour of Deep Purple now, uh, Brad left and he was replaced by Brett Williams and they also scored a, um, a support to a, when Bon Jovi were around in 87. They recorded their second album, Big Bad Noise, and uh, that album had the single Run to Paradise, which uh, went absolutely ballistic. Now, the album uh, went platinum or double platinum, I think, in 88 with um, the fabulous song Struggle Town, which I really like. Uh, so the 1990s come along and the Choir Boys recorded Midnight Sun in L.A. with the producer Mark Tanner. Uh, there were some other albums that came along, Dead Drunk Live Hangovers. Um, various members kind of came and went. Brad Heaney from the Screaming Jets actually replaced Lindsay Tebbett at one stage. Steve Williams replaced Brett uh, on guitar by 93. Uh, they had a compilation album, Decade, 1983-93. After that, they had Dancing on the Grave of Rock and Roll. That was in 94. The next album, Yo-Yo, that was recorded in Germany during 1996 and Richard Lara actually replaced Brett Williams on guitar. Uh, the band were um, lucky to score a, a, a support with Cheap Trick on their Australian tour and uh, they also recorded Evolver in 2004. In 2007, the next studio album was So Easy, and that had a lot of um, cover versions of some Easy Beat songs, which is awesome. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's probably taken in 1980 at Warringah Mall Shopping Centre in the car park. That's um, fantastic. Yeah, so um, isn't wow. isn't that interesting? You know? That's really, really uh, cool. And then, then there's Back to Me, of course. Oh, by the way, that's um, going to that guitar. Oops, I got the wrong one. Let's go yeah. to this one. Um, that is my Telecaster, mm -hmm. which I believe is right there. Oh, wow. How amazing. You've still got it. <laughs> still, oh, I've still got it. It's looking a bit beaten up, but it sounds amazing. Oh, you know? that's fantastic. Soon after, Gable, Mark Gable ventured into radio sh shows uh, first he was with Vega, 95FM or 95.3FM in Sydney. And then in 2012, he hosted his own radio show, The Awesome 80s, and that was on uh, the local 2GO FM uh, station uh, here on the Central Coast. So in 2018, the Choir Boys released an instrumental album, 1965, Life's a Beach. Check that one out. It's awesome. In 2019, they released a series of cover EPs, and, um, yeah, so in 2021, they also released some singles, Feels Good, Sorry, and Rendezvous. And, yeah, sadly, in 2021, Lindsay Tebbett passed, a drummer. Um, there was a story about Lindsay where he told a, a Blue Mountains uh, radio guy that 
He actually believed that Michael Gadinsky had told the owner of an Adelaide radio station that um, he'd actually keep the big overseas acts out of Adelaide venues if the song Run to Paradise wasn't played. So, yeah, apparently that's the story. And, you know, the song did go to number one in that town. And, in fact, in 2018, it was ranked number 24 on a list of the most Australian songs of all time. Now, I wanted to show you the this article by Murray Engelhard. It's in Duke magazine, and the pictures are by Tony Mott. Fabulous Tony Mott, fabulous Murray Engelhardt. So what separates the rock and roll boys from the rock and roll men, according to this article, is attitude. So, um, yeah, it just talks about... The, the, the period, now this is 1988, it's June, it's a great cover. Talks about the band's rapid re-entry into chart stardom. Um, yeah, just about, you know, people that they see, um, even when they were during the interview, you know, people asking for autographs. Uh, one, one kid apparently saw them coming out of Sweethearts in a crappy car and was like, oh, you know, that's a crappy car for a big band. So just all kinds of stuff is um, in that interview. It's really good. They did sort of support or we'll go on tour with bands like the Angels and um, uh, Rose Tattoo, and apparently they were supposed to do the Cold Chisel Last Stand support, but uh, Mark Gable lost his voice, and uh, I believe that might have been a blessing in disguise because, um, yeah, he just mentioned something about everybody sort of backed off, which was a good thing. Yeah, you can kind of see lots and lots of um, videos on YouTube. They're all out there. I was lucky um, to chat with Mark where I talk about the beginnings of the band in about 1978 where they first met with George Young and, you know, hanging out in the studios. It's then that I received a phone call in 1978 um, mm -hmm. and I may have mentioned that in the, the theatre show on the weekend mm -hmm. that George Young called up after receiving a demo uh, given to him by Herm Kovac from TMG mm -hmm. um, and he rang me up saying, you know, Mark, I love what you're getting together. He assumed that I was a solo artist, right? And then I went in for the meeting. I said, no, I'm, you know, it's a band that we're starting. So away we went and we started going in and doing demos around the 78 time. That's when I met Stevie Wright. I talk about uh, when they released their first album and I guess the beginnings of, you know, when Run to Paradise sort of all began. I think I read something about Jenny being from Warringah Mall or something, and, and I want to ask yes, you, indeed. Who's, who's Johnny from Run to Paradise? Johnny is a reference to Brad Carr, our original guitarist, because okay. um, he and I were uh, fiddling around with the original form of Run to Paradise in, I guess, 1980 or something like that, um, or even earlier, I'm not too sure, in yeah. Studio 5 at Albert's. Um, and though he didn't contribute anything to the original version, I still gave him a percentage of the songwriting. Um, but it's a reference to Brad in there, but like, Bradley, it <laughs> didn't really work in the song, so... <laughs> I learned that Mark is an avid photographer and I also note uh, lots and lots of um, awesome guitars hanging on his walls and a Telecaster that he still has. Oh, yeah, it, w it was great times. And mm. oddly enough, Lindsay Tebbett, who was our original drummer who passed away a couple of years ago, took some photos. Now, I'm, I've am i always been a, a an avid amateur photographer, but during that period I wasn't taking photos. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I'd sold my first Nikon that I had. I don't know why. Oh, um, no. <laughs> and so, but th there are, you know, and I have been placing them up on um, Instagram, uh, uh, photos of um, the recording time in around 1983. Now, Mark does recall a former music venue uh, at the Collaroy Hotel. It used to be 1066 Wine Bar. Um, also, yeah, he mentions that he loves Italians, which is nice to hear. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I ask him about, you know, different scenes, uh, the city, the suburbs, uh, different songwriters and how they include Australian towns in their songs, you know, Don Walker, Steve Kilby, uh, Paul Kelly. 
Uh, he talks about the reasons for, for doing the current shows that are, are playing around town at the moment. So just check out my description for all the details of where they're playing and, and links to, you know, various Choir Boys related stuff. Uh, I ask him uh, questions about the industry, uh, other Australian bands, whether, you know, he's supportive of them. So, yeah, it's an interesting interview. Hope you enjoy it. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, and bu uh, the like button. Uh, and remember to subscribe so that you can get future notifications of all, you know, the other vlogs that uh, I will be doing in the near future. Thanks for watching. You're quite happy to play Run to Paradise as one of the many songs, but <laughs> Steve apparently doesn't weird. like Unguarded Moment. I think, no. It yeah, I find that so bizarre because it's such a great song. Well, he said it on stage with me <laughs> once and he goes, I, like I said on, on the show, I said, I fucking hate this song. <laughs> I love this song.